Hi, my name is Sam. I'm on a mission to make transport sustainable using the power of steam. Okay, so about to make a start on roughing out the steam pump cylinder liners, I've got here a drawing of one of the cylinders. So I'm just taking the dimensions and tolerances of that. This is the liner here, which I'm going to rough out. And the dimensions shown are 130 on the OD and a 110 millimeter bore. Because the pump cylinder is constructed out of steel pipe, which can have sometimes uh, quite a, a wide tolerance on it, I'm not going to machine the OD of this liner to finished size until I've machined the bore of the pump. Hello Dean. Hello Sam, how's things? Good, what have you got for me there? Uh, live centre, thought you might be able to use it, it might be handy for your machining. Excellent, because I'm going to have some trouble with the line, as the, it's quite a lot of overhang. Yep. So that'll be large enough, that'll fit just perfectly. Yep, no, good as gold. Wonderful. I first got to face the end of the liner off, there's quite a lot of overhang on this, so I'm going quite slowly, but to get beneath the sand and scale, I've got to try and take quite a heavy cut. Typically the cut would be about 1 16th or 1.6 millimetres, but in this case I've got it down to about half that. It's working okay. Once I've got this faced off, I can put a 60 degree chamfer on the inside of here, and this will allow me to use the pipe centre that Dean has lent me to keep the liner stable while I machine the OD. Okay, the line has been faced off. The 45 degree chamfer has been machined. Now I'm going to run the tailstock up and rough turn the OD. So I'm here at the Canterbury Steam Preservation Society site on McLean's Island and I became a member here about six years ago. Since then I've learned a phenomenal amount about steam technology here. So much so that I, I really don't think I'd be on this journey today if I hadn't joined the society. So all credit to the society for being here so I could be inspired and learn about steam locomotives. And this is why preservation groups are so important. The, whether they realise it or not, highly efficient educational facilities. I mean, you can become a member at one of these preservation groups and without even trying, learn so much about history, about engineering, 
and about people too because everyone's volunteers it's it's a very different dynamic to having paid employees and this is really the reason that I've become in more recent years a trustee of the Midland Rail Heritage Trust in Springfield shortly we're having a working bee at the trust site in Springfield so we'll have a look at that see what's going on up there but um, today I'm here to do some preparation work for a night run that the uh, Canterbury Steam Preservation Society has coming up in a few days time The society operates two locomotives. This is commonly called the Price locomotive. It was built by ANG Price of Thames in New Zealand. It's a Heisler type locomotive, but it's a New Zealand variant of that. And the society also operates a Fowler 040 a tank locomotive. This is the one we'll be using on the night run in a few days time. For the night run we were looking to replace this headlamp with something a little bit more suitable because the fitting for the bulb in here um, isn't the original so it doesn't focus that well. But the headlamp we had didn't fit on this bracket so we've just put a 250 watt bulb in there and uh, for the speeds it's running it should be quite adequate. Unfortunately the price locomotive uh, blew a tube so it's now up for its 10 year survey, but typically this would be the lead locomotive on a night run. A few years ago I fitted this locomotive with a Lempore exhaust system, so you can see the, the new pipe runs directing the exhaust steam into the smoke box beneath the boiler. Originally the exhaust pipes ran up the side of the boiler, over the top of the tanks, and through that opening in the smoke box wrapper. The fitment of a Lempore exhaust really has improved the performance of this locomotive so it can actually keep steam pressure up when it's operating around the track. The original arrangement uh, wasn't that efficient, which led to a lot of fuel and water being consumed. So because it's not going to run for some time, the members here have uh, removed the uh, valve cover and the cylinder cover and lubricated the working faces with some cylinder oil. The engine has a particularly interesting valve gear. It's a radial valve gear. Uh, running off a single eccentric. So this is the single eccentric down here, or single throw eccentric, off which these rocker shafts are driven, and the motion is transferred to the other side of the engine, where the motion from each side of the engine is, is combined. The drive is then taken from the single throw crankshaft, through carden shafts, and down to geared bogies. So the bogies are just about pure Heisler. The engine is not at all. It's fitted with pannier tanks or side tanks, which has allowed the engine to be disposed exactly halfway between bogie centers. Unlike a Heisler where the engine is further forward and the water and fuel is located at the rear of the locomotive. In this case, there's just a fuel bunker. Right, I'm back at the Canterbury Steam Preservation Society for the night run. Uh, hopefully the weather holds out, it's supposed to get a bit windy, which can be a bit, a bit hairy with fire risk and so on. This year due to COVID-19 we've only had uh, one opportunity to run steam trains, so this is the second time running steam trains this year. Uh, the price locomotive is out of service, normally we would, we would have that for the night run, so we've got to rely entirely on the little 040 Fowler steam locomotive. Get the thing going, so when did you light the fire? Oh, it was about an hour, hour and a half ago. Hasn't laid steam yet, has it? 
We're making a lot of smoke too. No, no, that's what I'm saying. Steam. Oh, no, there. No wonder what I'm making steam. Yeah, well, that's what it's there for. It's over the area. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. It's an aircon. So if you leave it open, it's a cock up. Is it? It's a cock It's quite dry, and eh? normally it drips oil, obviously that's not been used for a while. Mm. Just a little bit of packing we've got to do to fix a hole on one of the curves. See, just around the corner there, so it's probably been dip there. Yep. It's like a tree reach, bloody fresh this up here. The fowler ran much better than I expected. We uh, took over a thousand people on the train during the course of the night. 
so it was, it was a good night all around it was really busy here um yeah really, really happy okay so i've roughed out the od of of the liner and now it's time to bore the internal diameter i've got uh, the largest boring bar that i that i have it's obviously not long enough to machine the full length of the liner and because it's quite small in diameter it tends to be too flexible at the cutting edge uh, due to the long overhang that tends to cause chatter uh, where the, the bar resonates and makes an awful mess of the of the surface finish uh, and a lot of noise so the only way to fix this is to make a new boring bar uh, so i've got some 50 mil brown stock the only 50 mil stock i've got is actually 4140 so it's going to be quite strong and i've got to turn that into a, a suitable boring bar i'll use a round uh, high speed steel tool bit as the cutting tool and that'll give me some more options in terms of cutting tool shape when i'm machining the, the cast iron so i've roughly sketched out the boring bar one of the issues i've got is typically a boring bar would have a flat machined top and bottom that would be clamped in the tool post but none of the tool posts i have will actually accommodate this size of boring bar so i'm going to machine the boring bar like so and that's going to allow it to fit into the the tool posts i have the tool bit fits in this hole here and that's retained by a grub screw here
the boring bar is complete at last. Well, that's it until next time. Look, a huge thank you to all those who are supporting the project, and an extra special thank you to those of you who have listened to your inner loco and joined the project as patrons. If you haven't already, please subscribe and have a look at my page on Patreon. I'd love to have you on the team as a patron to help me on my mission to make transport sustainable using the power of steam.